Hi everyone, this is Renata from Hungarian Language Solutions um, and this is the second citizenship tip centric video we are recording and I'm so happy to have um, the lovely Tara Gadomsky here with me and um, actually Tara, let me please hand it over to you right now and ask you first to perhaps introduce yourself a little please. Okay, I'm so used to doing it in Hungarian in my practice. So Gadomsky Tara Vajok, Sin his new Vajok, Philadelphia Ban Elek. Um so if you're still learning Hungarian, um I'm sure you know some of the basics. But um but yeah, my name is uh Tara Gadomsky. I'm so used to saying Gadomsky Tara now that it's 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 I almost it. hard to say it the other way. Mm -hmm. So Tara Gadomsky, um I am um Hungarian American now. Uh, I had um, my three of my great grandparents were born in Hungary. So and I actually knew um, two of them. So I uh, when I was a little kid got some of that culture. And um, of course, it was uh, still in my family throughout my grandmother mm -hmm. and father. So we did have that um, in our lives. And I um, am an actor and filmmaker. I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, though I was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where there are a lot of other um, hung Hungarians or people of Hungarian origin. A lot of people from Hungary came to uh, the Scranton, Pennsylvania area because there are a lot of um, coal mines there. So people worked in the coal mines in, in 100 years ago. And that was this, my family's story. So uh, I decided I for, for a long time have wanted to do the um educated sheet to honoshitashi al yarash um the simplified naturalization procedure um ever since you know i've heard about it uh it being in existence however you know like a lot of people lacking time um mm -hmm. i finally started the process actually when during covid because i found myself with like a lot of people more time on available and I thought okay I'm gonna this is I'm gonna take this time I'm gonna buckle down I'm gonna get my paperwork in order and most importantly improve my Hungarian greatly um and uh I thank you and everybody who helped me for that yes which you did absolutely so you should definitely first of all thank yourself because you've been you've been working so incredibly hard and I think you have already touched on this but let, let's just say uh you became a citizen uh, quite recently. Yes, um, just a few weeks ago, uh, March twenty. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank as well. you. Yeah, it's actually actually almost a, almost a month ago now. Yeah, thank you. It was a it was a <laughs> it was a fantastic ceremony at the uh, Hungarian consulate in New York City. Uh, it was very emotional. There were not, about nine of us there. Yeah, there were nine of us taking the oath and. Um, it was for me, I was very emotional, happy, emotional, because when I had when I got the email that I was approved and going to the going to be going to the ceremony, that's when I was crying oh, <laughs> and I got that all out. I was so emotional because it's a big thing. Of course, and big... you worked so hard. Yes. And and just the and and I'll talk about this later um, in this interview, but the sort of um, the emotions when you think about your family and your grandparents and great grandparents really come to, you know flooding mm -hmm. into in, in that moment but once i got to the ceremony i was just so happy i was just like smiling the whole time the man next to me though interesting was was sobbing crying the whole time oh. so everybody had different emotions there it was really an interesting day it was beautiful the um oath was wonderful to take of course the the um the national anthem you know playing that and then um we had the little um Pesco, like the clinking mm -hmm. of glasses at the end, which was really fun, a little champagne. And then we were able to chat with the um, the consulate, which was wonderful um, in Hungarian. And then we the and then we went to um, a friend, some uh, friends and family. We went to a, a kochma afterwards and, and had a celebration. Unfortunately, Very in fun. New York, yeah, in New York City, there's no, um, you know, in, in actually Manhattan now, there's no like, mm -hmm. Hungarian restaurant, like, or pub, but mm -hmm. um, that is just strict. I mean, there's a couple that are owned by Hungarians, which is mm -hmm. fun, but um, so we went to a, an Irish pub, but still, <laughs> we had a good time. You know, it, I think it's important to, to properly celebrate our mm -hmm. achievements. So I agree. Nice. Yes. yes. So Tara, what were the challenges 
uh, you were facing in terms of learning Hungarian and preparing for the interview? Sure. Um, probably like a lot of people, the, the two the challenges are twofold. There's the um, getting all your documents in order challenge, um, because if you're going back, you know, a few generations, you do have to have that all lined up. Um, and, and, and in terms of the language, you know, everybody says Hungarian is one of the most difficult languages. It is a difficult language. Mm -hmm. um, what I kept saying to myself is, I have to know this. It's in my blood. I can get there, you know? So, um, but so I'll, I'll address both of those. So the mm -hmm. um, paperwork challenge is, and this is something that could be common to many people in the US of Hungarian origins, is that when our um, grandparents or great grandparents came to the US, sometimes they didn't, um, they weren't able to write or, you know, and so a person at the immigration just wrote their name, however they thought it sounded. Yeah. And they might have, and at the time, some people, they would write down, you know, if they were coming from when it was Austria-Hungary before 1920, they, sometimes it would be written down in paperwork, Austria, or there was, so there was yeah. a couple things like that in my, in my, um, nothing huge, thank goodness, thank goodness my, um, they did spell my great grandmother's name right, but there was like one thing in her marriage certificate where they put like Austria instead of Hungary for her birthplace, but her everything else, you know, had a, had had Hungary. So there was a couple things like that, which I, I wanted to address. So what I did was I wrote a letter in Hungarian, which we included with my application saying, I just want to address this point. This is why they, you know, on her marriage certificate, they put Austria because at that time in the U.S., you know, she didn't speak or write English. So it was, you know, we're just speaking and she, she probably just said yes, you know, when, when somebody asked her at the marriage registry. So those were the kind of, and I think a lot of people that I speak to that are doing this process that are in the same position I am in terms of great grandparents or great grandparents coming to the US, there are these small little paperwork challenges. And yeah. so you have to make sure that you address them, right? You don't to not try to just let them slip because you have to, you know, address them in a in um, a letter or make sure that things are properly lined up. So I'd say that was a challenge and something I was nervous about. In terms of learning Hungarian, um, it, it's it, again, it's a challenging language, but I like learning languages. I'm in a, a good position for that. And so um, I would say it's mostly like finding the time to dedicate yourself to it because mm -hmm. when I progressed the most is when I every day sat down first thing in the morning and I'm not and I'm not kidding for an hour would study like just I would get make sure I got up early and then I would do this for like several chunks at a time and I didn't do it every single day over the over three years but if I needed to like need make some progression, I'd sit down and go back through the exercises in the, you know, um, mm -hmm. grammar book, redo them, listen, listen every night. Mm -hmm. And I do feel that that it's, it's not something you can just lightly do. You have to dedicate to the, the language learning, um, especially to get to this level, to be able to do the interview. So I think that was so, my biggest. So you are saying one hour per day. Uh, is what what you need to do and, I and think so. mm -hmm. yeah. funny, that you should, funny you should mention this because um at the end of our course as you know we send out this feedback form to each learner and we always ask the question for how many hours did you sit down and study on your own in between two lessons with with your teacher and most mm -hmm. people say uh, they sit down and study for around five to six hours in between two lessons with, with a teacher uh, from Hungarian Language Solutions. And uh, that means an hour per day, basically exactly. just what you did. Yeah, yeah, I really, you have to, you have to be willing to do that, to find that mm -hmm. time. And it's hard, you know, I mean, there were days I just set my alarm, I mean, I, for, you know, 6 a.m. Or, or earlier, just like rolled out of bed, went right to the table with a cup of coffee and opened the book and, um, and I think that helped. And then, of course, like at nighttime, I'd always try to like listen to podcasts or something like that. Mm -hmm. And again, along with all the lessons, so you have to have your do your own preparation, you know, as well. That's yeah. so important. So important. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, what was most valuable? What did you most enjoy when you when you were working with my colleague, Julia? Because I know okay. the two of you made an amazing team. 
<laughs> yes, I loved working with Julia. We had um, a great time and we really, um, I, what I liked is she was, she was really able to uh, work toward my strengths, you know, and, and improve those and then find the places where I was weaker and um, I don't say point those out, but, but, you know, examine those and we'd figure out a way how to make those weaknesses stronger mm -hmm. points. So um, one thing that um, I really liked and that sh she was great at doing was um, mock interviews mm -hmm. uh, and what, what I like, no, I'm an actor. So for me, that really played to a strength of mine because I could be doing that. And I love that Julia stepped up too, because sometimes she would play a very friendly interviewer. Sometimes she'd play like a stern interviewer. Sometimes she'd play like a disinterested interview. So she did different ways so that I didn't get in a routine. So I wasn't okay. prepared to whoever I met. Now I will say the interview that I had two interviews actually for the, um, with the uh, government officials and they were both very nice but um but i was prepared for somebody that might be disinterested or or not nice not friendly so that was great um the other thing is you know from the moment i logged on julia would be speaking hungarian you know and would only only if i like really couldn't get something mm -hmm. would help me out by you know giving the english translation but it was we're talking 90 minutes of these lessons of mostly only speaking hungarian you know i also really like that you got um the thing was the um the class was recorded on zoom mm -hmm. and then i got a copy of that because i could watch that back and 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 hear where i was making mistakes um and um and i uh, another thing i would say that was really important from your curriculum for me was um, learning the history because, you know, I had, you ha I, I always talk about this, my great grandparents and grandparents always talked about the old, the old country, the old mm -hmm. country, right? It was this place. And that's where I think I would get sometimes emotional, like being able to go back to the old country, but we didn't, so I knew about like the culture, or of course the food, but I didn't know about the history. And in a lot of ways they didn't either. I mean, they were, um, like subsistence farmers, like the equivalent of like what you'd say peasant, uh, that word's a funny word to say nowadays, but that's, so it wasn't like they were involved in the history and thing, like knowing the dates and stuff like that. But when I learned about that through work with you and Julia, it really started, to, I started to understand my family mm -hmm. story so much more um, and why people had to move at different times and how the borders changed and, 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 but what that meant. And, and I felt so much more connected then because mm -hmm. I knew, you know, that, and I, and, um, so I think that was uh, a really important part of the curriculum that I was surprised at. I thought, Oh, I don't know, history that I have to like learn this. Can't I just talk about, you know, myself, but it was really important to, to, to understanding this more. Um, so, and like, I love that I know Hungarian, like I know Hungarian history really, really well now. I mean, oh, all the important so. parts and I feel really like proud of that. And, um, even just being able to now, like when I watch Hungarian films on like on Netflix or Amazon, I, and I understand, oh, I understand this now because I know yeah, the no history. Context. Yes. It deepens, mm -hmm. it deepens Hungarian books, mm -hmm. films, it deepens everything. And of course, also my family history, I understand now. So. I really loved loved that part as well as to me, yeah, to me the history, learning about the history, and then the mock um, interviews and just mm -hmm. speaking Hungarian all the time was was really wonderful. Oh, that's that's so amazing. Um, I think it's also really nice that you that you mention it because when you start understanding your your heritage more, you understand yourself better, and yes. and that's so important for everyone. It's really nice. yes. You know, as you know, during this process, I went, I traveled as close to my great grandmother's village as I possibly could. It's now because of the history, her, the village where she was born is now part of Ukraine. So mm -hmm. I couldn't go to the actual village, although I hope mm -hmm. to be able to do that someday. But I was able to, I went as close as I could. So I went to the border, the far, the far Eastern border of Hungary on a trip. And then when I went there, I said, even just being in, in that space, that land, and I said, I said to my friend, this all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. I said, all of a sudden, so much about my life makes sense. Just 
just the people and the land and just the I just so understood so much more and and, and because of everything that I had been learning in class too of yeah of course of course that's really really nice now in terms of tips and tricks uh what would you say to someone Tara who uh is considering to start learning Hungarian and preparing for the for the citizenship interview great you know, I, I love this and I love tips and tricks. I feel funny because um, every person's journey is going to be different, right? Now, of what course. I love about your curriculum is how you cover so many different possibilities. You know, I remember mm -hmm. listening to the um, the interviews that you have as part of your curriculum, you know, the ones that the mock interviews where there was somebody who's, you know, married to a Hungarian and doing it that way. And there's another one where a woman is you know, it's her grandparents or her mother or something. Oh. And, and so I love listening and hearing different things, how people talk. So everybody's journey is going to be different. So, um, but I feel like the things, the the big tips I would say were, was it's from what I learned in my, no, like I said, I did two interviews just so people understand why, because mm -hmm. of course this is a big, this is a big debate, you know, when you get into like social media forums about people who do this Facebook, how to do it. You know, there's so much out there and, and like misinformation, I think. So I did do the first way. I went to Hungary and submitted my application um, at the Kormana block. So like at the government office, I had an appointment mm -hmm. and I submitted it there because, you know, there's this sort of like, there's this sort of um, myth, I guess you'd say that that's going to be easier, right? Because it's, it's um, at the government office. It's, it's not, people who do this every day they're processing all kinds of different applications for different you know things so it's not someone who's going to like really grill you on the hungarian so i kind of thought well i did that but also i, I mean I'd, i was going to hungary i wanted to be there anyway and i just thought well that would be nice to just submit it there while i'm there while i'm involved while i'm in the middle of everything and that was great but um and it all went really well and i thought was this great you know i had but then uh, of course, a few, maybe six months later, I got, or maybe three months later, I got a, a a letter saying, thanks so much, your application's in process, but now you need to go for the interview at the Hungarian embassy in the U.S. Because mm -hmm. I think that they're like, we still need to try, test your Hungarian. Because I think that, I don't know if that would happen for everybody, but for me, that's what they, they, they just, they just said that. So I would say, it's it could work out quickly at the if you go to in Hungary or maybe it won't you know you might still have to go to the embassy mm -hmm. so I, I I so I would say I did two interviews um it was but it was it was good maybe that was really really a, it was it was a good procedure all along mm -hmm. but I would say this the the thing that I found is that your um one letras so your biography that you write as part of your application is very important i found in both interviews um now it is true that they make you write it in front of them so you can't write it beforehand and bring it you have to write it before you have to write it in front of the person interviewing you that happened both in hungary and in washington dc at the embassy i had to sit there and write it now i had practiced it many i mean when i say i practice it i'm probably more than a hundred times i practiced writing that um, by that biography and I'd write it and then check my mistakes and then I'd write it again. So even on, the, I remember the train ride to Washington DC, I was writing it for practice. But so I think um, that's really important, but what is more, even more important when you write it in front of them, what happened in both cases is the person interviewing me took it, read it and asked me questions based on what I wrote, mm -hmm. which was great because there were things I could talk about, right? It was, it was, the, I was talking about my family, talking about my work, all things I had practiced, right? So I would say, be prepared to speak about what's on that biography that you write. Um, exactly. because that may be where they take the questions from, because, you know, people doing the interview, they think, well, what am I going to ask? Let me see what they've written. Um, so I think be prepared to talk about anything on there. For example, one of the things I wrote about was, yeah, I wrote about my nieces and nephews in my biography. And so they said, the person, um, one of the people interviewing me said, oh, what, you know, tell me about your nieces and nephews more. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do together? What do you like to do? And I was like, okay, great. I can talk about shopping with my niece and go, mm -hmm. you know, going to baseball games with my nephews. So it was, it was good. Um, I would say definitely be prepared to talk about your biography. 
uh, I'd say do as many mock interviews as you possibly can. And when I say mock interviews, not just like do them as if you walk in, you're sitting down, you, you know, you start from the very beginning to the very end. And another thing I did now, again, I'm an actor, so I'm used to this. I wore the outfit that I knew I was going to wear to the interview to like the last few mock mock interviews I did with Julia. I did a full full dress rehearsal, I was saying, because I think that was it just it made sure that I was comfortable. I made sure I was like, you know, mentally. I, yeah, mentally. And I then I knew I'm like, this is the outfit I put on when doing this. Um, so I think that as many mock interviews you can make sure your biography is good, dedicate the time. And then also kind of, I think to remember that the person doing the interview is a human being. Um, what I found, what I was very, um, touched by is that I think in both cases, this person was actually interested to meet me and hear my story. You know, we yeah. think, yeah, it's not like, I think we get in our head, like it's going to be this person's you know mm. scary person who's there to check you off and say bad good whatever it's not it's actually a, a hungarian person working for the government who has an interest in other you know hungarians in the world mm. and wants to talk to me so if you can treat it like that like a, a nice conversation with them and realize they're a human being who wants to talk and they might be a little bit nervous because this is something new to them to have to go meet people and interview people and just remember you're having a conversation with a human being who's um you know a, 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 who's there doing their their thing and they you know you want to have a nice conversation so i ended up what was cool was i, I ended up finding out the um person who interviewed me in washington dc where she was born in hungary and then it turns out she was born not far from where my great grandmother was born so we were able, like you know in, in the eastern Hung and i knew the town she had come from so that was fun so treat that person like a real person not some scary government official you know wow that that's such a good piece of advice you are you are giving here that um people shouldn't be that nervous because it's it's a conversation Yes, the oh conversation. Really nice, perfect. And then finally, Tara, I also would like to ask you, has learning Hungarian and has um, becoming a Hungarian citizen changed your life in any way? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so let's, let's, I think there's something that kind of should be always addressed when you're thinking about Hungarian citizenship, a lot of people start the process because having a Hungarian citizenship is good for your life, right? Because it opens up a lot of places to work and live in the world. Mm -hmm. And let's be like, I think we have to be honest about that when we start at the baseline. And but I'll tell you that maybe where I started and I am in such a different place now because mm -hmm. of the procedure, like because of learning about my family's history, about really thinking and more importantly, like learning the language and being able to communicate. I, I, it's, it became so much more than a passport. And, and I, and I, and I, I feel funny saying that because I don't want to, I mean, but I think, you know, to be honest, like that, that's how, why some people start. Right. Oh, and then, yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, that that's okay, but please, under it understand it's much much more than that um and if you really uh jump in with both feet it is it becomes much more that becomes much deeper um so how it changed my life was that i mean now before i would say like yeah i you know my great grandparents were born in hungary whatever now i'm like yeah i'm hungarian like that's di like that's different i'll say hungarian changed, American. Of course. yeah exactly because i was born here um mm -hmm. And, um, and so like, I, I, so the, I really feel this connection to a place. Um, and, and again, it's still the old country, right? Because, mm -hmm. the, because the borders shifted so much, the place where my great grandparents called home is not hungry anymore, but it's still the old country, right? So I feel this like connection to that area, the old country, the, 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 the feeling, the place. Um, and so I think I, 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 again, got to know myself better, got to like understand my family better, got to, got to know like why my grandmother acted certain ways. She was the kindest, kindest woman. And also like had so much, you know, they had, they had a lot of 
like difficulties from mm -hmm. birth. My great, my great grandmother, of course, coming here, you know, with one suitcase, never seeing her parents again. Um, and I, and I, even though I always knew that story, when I really dug into like the paperwork and dug into like the Hungarian history about when she left and why she left, I just understand her so much more. And then by default, you know, her daughter, my grandmother, and then my dad, and then me. And so I, yeah, it, it's almost like, I don't would say therapy, but it is a form of therapy because you get to know yourself and your family better and why things are certain ways and, and you get to appreciate things so much more. So I feel a, such a wonderful connection to Hungary and Hungarian people and um, so proud now too. I, that's another thing that's changed is that I was always proud um, of my my family because they worked so hard. But, you know, things like, um, like in the US, for example, like Italian culture and maybe like Irish culture is so mm -hmm. like everybody knows about it. And it's so fun and stuff like that. But like Hungarian or other Central European or Eastern European is a little bit less like, and I remember growing up, we would eat these weird foods and we went you know, to a different church than everybody else because they didn't, you know, speak English. And um, I always felt a little bit like embarrassed. Now I'm like so proud of like my, like, you know, on Easter, I made, you know, I made all of the Hungarian foods and which mm -hmm. I would do every Easter anyway. And I was like, so proud of this. I'm like, this is us. This is something to, to be proud of. And so, yeah, I, I'm so changed by this. Um, I can't stop talking about Hungary to everybody. <laughs> um, I can't, you know, I'm so excited about being able to go and work there and live there someday eventually um and i yeah i am very very changed and like i said i started in one place which was much more of a like almost like business like transaction okay this will be good to do for and i've it's it's became this very emotional investment which um i'm i'm i'm, I'm really proud like i said i'm so proud to be like yeah i'm, I'm hungarian american mm -hmm. and i'm like really proud of it Oh, thank you so much for mentioning this. You, you don't even know, Tara, but you really made my day uh, telling me about this because this has been one of our goals for the past 13 years at Hungarian Language Solutions to, to teach people not just the language, but to infect you with the love for Hungarian culture. And I can really see we have managed to do this with you. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And I think that's the purpose too of this program, right? The simplified naturalization mm -hmm. procedure where you can go back to your great grandparents because I think that that's, um, you know, that, 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 that I think that's part of this program that this government program. And I think that's, you know, a really wonderful thing. Um, I would say I was lucky because I did have the connection. I knew my great grandparents. We had the food culture, the music <laughs> culture, the church culture all through my life. So I think it'd be harder if like, maybe you didn't know them, right? But starting out, but you can learn about that. It's great. You know, talk to your, uh, that's a, this is, I guess, a tip, right? I, oh, that's the other thing. I would say this too. I talked to so many second cousins and great aunts and stuff like that, that I I had, would talk to once in a while at family events, but I was like talking to everybody because I was like asking for more information about my great grandmother. Like, do you mm -hmm. remember this? And because she lived with one of my aunts. And so I was asking those like um, cousins, like, do you remember like this about her and this about her. And so it was really fun to like reconnect that way as well too. So I was very lucky to have that. I think it'd be harder if we didn't, but I know that you there, there's people out there who know about your your Hungarian ancestor you can oh. talk to an old, you know, aunt or uncle. And if not, the paperwork can tell you a lot when you read into it, you know, and then learning the, looking at the paperwork that they have and then learning the history from you and Julia, it all comes together and it all makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So Tara, thank you so much for, for finding the time to sit down with me today. <clears throat> I really enjoyed chatting with you and, and I'm sure um, our other learners will really enjoy listening to you and walking and walk away with um, a lot of tips and tricks you have just provided. <clears throat> thank you so much.